Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello. Welcome. Good day and happy modding. Welcome to another Let's Update ModdingOpenMW.com. Hey, hey, Gonzo. Good day. Welcome. Glad you're here, my dude. Uh, thank you as well for the usual sound check. We'll go ahead and check that off, eh? You can hear me and the usual uh, soundtrack. We got some jamming Final Fantasy music right now going. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, jumping right in. A uh, couple of mod updates um, that I'll go into detail on. There's some uh, website back end, front end. Uh, oops, typo there. Front end tasks uh, we need to get caught up on before we resume uh, going through the list as we've been doing the past couple weeks. Um, also, there's this idea that came up uh, again recently with a suggestion from a user on Discord. And then, uh, yeah, as always, we'll put the code up there so we can check it out. So uh, first things first, got a couple of website updates, uh, mod updates, as I mentioned. Uh, let's pull this up right here. First off, signpost fast travel. Uh, and it's kind of a huge change log here. Uh, adding, namely, the menu-based fast travel system that's implemented uh, with a I item requirement. Um, you can optionally make it for free. Um, and that way you just use it all the time. Um, and yeah, fix a couple of bugs regarding uh, checking if you're in combat. But I did want to actually jump in the game and take a look at that one here. Real quick, in its final form, we've looked at it a few times over the past few weeks. We'll load this up on a special version of the, whoops, of the Just Good Morrowind mod list that I have set up here locally. There we go. All right. And, uh, yeah, I'm just here. Good old Satanin. And, uh, whoop. And here's our travel menu, as you can see. And I ran around to a couple different places. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, just a... Uh, you know, menu-based interface to what we were providing before, and yeah, it recollects every point you've been to, including ones that don't normally have destinations, right? So, like, we can go over to uh, Odai Plateau, you know, uh, Plateau, and here we are, um, you know. Let me just go ahead and load that one back up again. Wait, is that going to take me... Or, you know, we want to go to, uh, whoop, come on. There we go. We want to go uh, get a random point in Balmora. This will be interesting. <laughs> All right, yeah, I mean, I was getting a view when I showed up. I couldn't help but want to go there. So, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to uh, take a quick peek at that. And uh, we'll check that off. And next up on the, hey, uh, hey, Jake. No sound. You cannot hear me? Uh, oh, on the... You mean on my game? Yeah, I have it uh, I have it turned way down at the moment. Whoop. Uh, or, yeah, if it is me, in fact, that you cannot hear, yikes. Might be on your end. Uh, <laughs> um, but otherwise, the game... Yeah, I had that actually turned down. So, whoops. If I go back in the game, we'll put sound back on. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Hi, moms. Um, next up, though, on the update train, uh, NCGD MW Lua Edition. Good old leveling mod. Um, and this is, just has a really hefty change log as well, um, including lots of dev build only features. Jail time no longer counted. Fixing the birth signs. Thick border enable star wind names. Uh, uh, adding optional stuff like state base HP, which was requested as a feature. Um, decay only being calculated when you're using it. Hey, Sophia, good day. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Uh, just going on the mod update train real quick here. Going over some stuff I pushed out this morning when I was on a update frenzy while drinking coffee. Um, so yeah, if you're a fan of NCGD MW Lua Edition, check it out, version 2.0. Um, I like to think it's pretty battle-tested by me at this point, but uh, give it a shot. Um, and then the final mod that I updated that I want to show today is Abandoned Flat Containers V2.0. And it's an extension... Um, to the abandoned flat, plit, abandoned flat player home mod that uh, we looked at actually, I don't know, like a month ago, we were doing some interior decorating um, with OpenMWCS. And this mod is kind of the, the result of that. And uh, as it says here, it's got some clutter from uh, fabulous data collection mods, uh, OAAB data, Tamriel data. 
And uh, and I took the liberty actually of adding a boss fight too, and some non Morrowind references that are decidedly non lore friendly. Um, check the README file for the spoiler ridden details. Uh, and then yeah, the the Lua powered inventory helper cubes that sort your items and stuff. They're back, and there's actually more of them, uh, including a take everything and put them in the right containers one. So yeah, good deal. If you're like me and you don't like the mangling with items concept, then uh, you know this is something that you can do. And I definitely encourage anybody to take this code and use it. Yeah, there's nothing really specific actually to abandon flat in here, just the object IDs, which you could change easily. So, all right. Um, so that's the update train of stuff I was doing, throwing out there. Um, and as I said, I wanted to catch up on uh, website back end front end tasks. And actually, Ronic was kind enough to open an issue here with uh, some minor annoyances. Uh, that they ran into when using the new search feature. So I thought we could go through and just kind of some of these. I think we can actually handle all of these. Um, so the first one would be results should really be ordered alphabetically if a best match feature isn't possible. So I did this morning look into this and uh, I would prefer to do kind of a scoring feature, right? Best match. If I type Tamriel Rebuilt, it should sort things based on how closely they match it. Um, that's a bit complicated to implement, and actually part of the search that we ripped out before had that kind of built into it, so that's something that we lost uh, coming from the old search, unfortunately. So while I think overall this search is better, we did lose some features. Um, it's not impossible to add back, but it's not something uh, I would be able to do without a little bit of research into uh, how to implement all that stuff. So. For now, I think what we can do is we can simply make it, uh, you know, alphabetically. So let's take a look at what we got here now. Um, I actually have the website here. So, yeah, okay. Um, I was actually testing a different problem. But, uh, so let's just do Ronix case right here. We'll type in Tamriel Rebuilt. And as you can see, it's like awkwardly, Tamriel Rebuilt is like one of the... It's on the bottom half of the of the results, the bottom portion at least. Um, so without it being alphabetical, it's a little awkward to find it. You're just kind of like, huh? So um, absent having a scoring system, let's just go ahead and make this alphabetical, and that should be as simple as this. So, let's see what happens. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so this makes a bit more sense. It's not as good as having the exact match up at the top. Um, we'll consider that though like a stretch goal for maybe pre-2090, we'll see. Uh, so cool, all right, uh, let's go back to the issue here. And uh, so I think what we'll do is I'll open a new issue specifically for adding the scoring mechanism to searching so we can improve it um, and handle that separately. So, all right, um, so we knocked out the first point. Cool. When I search for OAAB data, I want the search to find OAAB data. Okay. We're going to have to get a little creative to solve this one, but I think we can do it as well. So first off, let's go here. And let's see what happens. Yeah, nothing. Ugh. That's a bummer. So, hmm, let's get a little creative here. In the past, when we've needed to do things like, uh, for example, in order to let something like this work, BCOM, we had to cheat a little bit. BCOM being an abbreviation for Beautiful Cities of Morrowind. And what we did in that case was because when we deploy the website we're crunching the data uh, you know at deploy time we can take liberties with things like uh, for example here we go a brief name or is alpha name uh, a brief name being 
something that we, when we make the, uh, the mod entry in the database, we take the first letter of each word in the name, and boom, and that's how we get BCOM. So let's, uh, real quick, let's jump into the shell here and look at what we've got already. Because I think we might already have the, I'm seeing here, I forgot we had, um, excuse me, yikes. I forgot we had is alpha name, and actually that was from a suggestion from Sophie, where, uh, what was it, uh, she mentioned wanting, uh, let's see here, oh, oh geez, I just killed the website, but to search for appels without the apostrophe and make that work. So this is a similar principle. Let's just see what we have for OAAB data, though. Um, it's clearly not enough because we got no results, but maybe it's something. Okay. Uh. Yes. Okay. Make sure we got the right one here. Sanity check. Okay, cool. Uh, is alpha a name? Okay. Hmm. So what we've done here is we have chopped out... the special character, but I'm thinking what we need is yet another field where we don't chop it out, we turn it into a space. We do the same thing uh, that we're doing, except for if it's a space, or if it's a something we would normally chop out, we turn it into a space. All right, I'll show you what I mean. Trust me, it'll all make sense in a minute. Uh, okay, data seeds, mod, data, okay. No, no, this is not. We have to comb through the code a little bit here. Please bear with me. Uh, oh, first. There we go. Generate mod. And you can see right here, another one we create is alpha. Um, whoa. All right. <laughs> I think the hardest part about doing this is gonna be coming up with a name for this field. Uh. We'll call it special two spaces. which is a bit long, uh, but it's accurate, and I think that's what's important. It will convey what the heck it is to the curious reader. All right. <laughs> so it's basically gonna be the same thing here. It's gonna be like this. Okay, magic. I think that should be it. Uh, we need to make the migrations. Tell the database about the new thing we want it to hold for us. Okay, so let's make the screen big here. We'll go to make, make migrations. There we go. We're adding the new field as you can see here, okay. And then now we have to crunch it for a moment. But when it's done, we should see our new you know, special to spaces name where it's OAAB space data. And then we can add that to the search. And Ronick's wish will come true. And mine too. All right. Uh, we can actually get ready for that while it's crunching. Oh, so let's go back to the search page. Yeah, okay. And so... Go ahead and just... It's going to be that easy. And so now, this page should return actually results. Um, it would be really nice if we could also, because we have an OAAB data tag, it would be really cool if we could somehow, like, I would have to think about this a little bit more, but to get the OAAB data tag along with this is a little bit trickier. We should, you know, have that as well. Um, 
we may have to do something similar for the tags, you know, stuff the arbitrary data in there at compile time. All right. And while this is crunching, actually, let's take a look at what's next. So this should be good to go. This should already work. We'll find out. Ooh, you know what? Hmm. No, no, it should have worked. Okay, so yeah. Hmm. With the space at the end, this is an easy fix. We'll simply chop the space off the end in the beginning. Wouldn't reasonably want to include that on purpose in a search. I wouldn't think. All right, it's getting close. I can't wait. <clears throat> cool. Wonderful. All right. So we don't have the, the scoring relevance-based results yet, so it unfortunately appears number two, but there it is, and that works. Yeah, success. Feels good. All right. So next, I was uh, with coffee this morning um, testing out the next one. Um, uh, no, I skipped to the last. We're going to skip to the last one, then we're going to look at Ramiros, uh, which is... We have the, spa the leading space here, and it breaks actually finding it, right? Because if I remove the space, come on now. Oh, did I? Yeah, okay. Remove the space, and then we do actually find the last result, um, the actual mod here. Well, we should be able to have the space trimmed out for us, right? It's like I said, I don't think somebody reasonably wants to do that, so let's... Let's look it up real quick, though, the function that we exactly we want. Um, Python strip. There we go. Because I know there's a few. Okay. There's a few different um, strip options. I don't want to actually read about them before we just pick one because it's been a minute before I've done so. Um, Python documentation, kind of lacking here a little bit, unfortunately. We're going to go ahead and bite the bullet and go to W3. At the beginning and end strip. Okay, tell you what. We have the perfect documentation here, actually. just read the documentation that Python comes with. That's best. Leading and trailing white space removed. Okay, but I know there is R strip. Trailing only. Okay. Yeah, we want to we want to remove all of it, front and back, really. Um, so let's go ahead and actually let's give a front and back space here. Oof. Okay. Well, you can <laughs> There we go. I put a plus. There is a space in the ht uh, in the in the request encoding. So, all right, we'll go back to the Python. We will rip. Might as well strip new line out of there too, I guess. Um, even though only a bot would reasonably do that, I'm gonna leave it in actually. Let the bots suffer. Hmm? All right, here we go. So our query remains with the space up here, actually. Whoa, 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 I'm gonna put a bunch of spaces in. Look at that. Crazy, look at that. Oof, how many spaces. But I've actually just searched for that. And indeed, we get the result we want. Okay, cool. Very cool. So we go back here. We've knocked out all the issues now, except for this one, which should be I'm a, little, I'm a little confused about this one. 
Let's see here. It's right there. Maybe we accident. Let's check the actual beta site. Maybe we accidentally fixed it. Um, no, it's actually comes up first there too. <sighs> yeah, I wouldn't want to. That's an interesting idea, Gonzo. Um, we should be able to sanely implement scoring and stuff. That'll just be for when I'm like <laughs> feeling like doing that. <laughs> All right, well, so I'm going to go ahead and call these all saved, uh, solved. Um, and then uh, let's go ahead and do this first, though. To, yeah, a little bit, you know, I want to try to avoid. We just cleaned up the code of the website so much. I want to try to avoid that. Um, I will say though, um, we can see here actually, because it's still live. This um, scoring based search does have its disadvantages, such as you can see right here, Project Atlas coming up twice. Um, you know, this doesn't happen with our new search system, obviously. We don't get magical dupe results. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, Project Atlas. You know, we don't get magical dupes. I have never been able to work out why this happens. And actually, if I'm running Postgres on my laptop, which is a different OS than the server granted, this doesn't happen. So it's like extra spicy because I could never reproduce it. Um, I digress. Hi, War. Thanks for joining. I hope you're doing well. Without the... Oh, I can read Altariel. Thank you. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Let's see. Ramirez without the... I think we may have fixed this. No. Okay. Oh, wait. Look. No, we did fix this. No. <laughs> Things are good, War. Thank you so much. You know, just uh, living life and doing the OpenMW Morrowind thing like always, you know. <laughs> That's it. Getting ready to plant a massive garden. Uh, thank you for clarifying, Altario. Uh, so check it. Without the apostrophe, I can read. Where's my coffee, dang rabbit? Uh oh. Hold on. Oh, me, oh, my. Excuse me. Um. Okay, uh, now this is a bit unfortunate. Let's go into the shell though and see. I have, yeah, no, I already, <laughs> Sophia, uh, I started early this morning. Um, finished the coffee already by now, so yeah, we're just out. <laughs> I mean, I could make more, but you know, I don't want to make it one of those kind of days. All right, um, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. Come on, get with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm already loaded. Whoa. Okay. Uh, I'm here off ground cover. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. What did I call this thing here? Special to. Special two spaces name. I do believe that's an exact. Oh. Hmm. That's adding a space, so there's two spaces in there. Ugh. One good hack deserves another, right? Okay. Okay. Well, like I said, one good hack deserves another, shall we? Sp 
special to none. this we'll do what well, we won't add another hack we will do our prior hack better to, so as to not require two hacks eh. we will say Alif char I think that'll fix it. <clears throat> so we're saying before we were saying if it's not an alphanumeric, so a number or a letter, switch it with a space. Now we're saying if it's not an alphanumeric and also not a space, switch it with a space, which should give us only one space. We'll see. And then with that, we will have knocked out all the other problems. Uh, let's finish writing this up. To sort search results by relevance or rank. We should ramp. This is a back-end feature. Okay, <sighs> gotta write this stuff down while I'm doing it, otherwise I'm gonna forget. All right, just in time. So, there we go. We get a result. So let's go over this again. Tons of spaces, no problem. One space, no problem. <laughs> uh, a thing we already had, abbreviations, no problem. No apostrophe, no problem. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, let's do Appel's, Appel's Lighthouse. There we go. No problem. All right, cool. Going to go ahead and commit that. I know. Well, not too much. Um, <laughs> the the you know the putting the field in here is possibly a little unorthodox, but I mean our deployment process in general is kind of um, so you know we're not going on too far off the rails there. I feel like uh, Okadoke. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Well, 
Well, that certainly didn't take much time. Now it's time to jump into the JavaScript. Are you ready? Mm, I think it was this file. Oh. This code is a little cursed. Not that much. A little bit, though. All right. Let's get ourselves a fresh browser here. never committed where we left off. I just put it in there as a stash, which is like saving it, but not committing it locally. It's like a save, but a not save, if you don't know about Git terminology. Okay. My poor laptop. And so we left off here, just re-implement. It was not solving any unsolved problems we were just uh solving things we already solved in a, in a different way so that we could do it um more for example we want to be able to add a mod to our config both from clicking the button also from checking the box or checking the big box um and that's where we left off oh me oh my look at this all right there we go not too bad okay So, what do we want to see? I want to see... When I click this, all of these mods should then on their detail page show up as configured. Meaning this should say remove from CFG, right? Oh no! I hit refresh. Okay. That was a mistake. I made a mistake. Well. We can at least see what happens when the page comes back. Because this thing now thinks, okay. <laughs> oh jeez. Wow. What's happening? Oh, yeah, just as usual, OBS monopolizing my, my everything, really. Um, hitting refresh, yeah, thank you, Gonzo. So hitting refresh just now hits the database hard. Um, it does the CFG generator query with the total overhaul preset, which is not a cheap database query um normally it's not too bad it's like a five second load on my laptop when i'm not streaming but yeah it's just obs and not having um you know hardware based graphical support really hurts so um but yeah i refresh the page here it thinks i'm it's in the config um unchecking this does not remove it from the config nor does checking checking this i believe should add it actually Okay, so kind of, like it does the opposite. <laughs> All right, so we got, let's just, <laughs> this is funny. Okay, so it's not enabled. I check this, it becomes enabled. Good, okay, uncheck this. Disabled, good, check that. Not. Okay, so that's what we need to fix. 
checking this biggin needs to trigger the code that is triggered when I check that little one. Right? So let's go back into my brain from two or three weeks ago and uh, figure this out. Alright. Sublist, is that what I called those? Input sublist, okay. So the big checkboxes here are gotten by this line of code. We get elements by class name, custom CFG, input sublist. This gives us a bunch of buttons. All of them. In fact, this code below is what makes them all check when I check the big one. That would be this little action right here. And actually, I do believe we are making an honest attempt here to set them as installed on this check, but it's not happening. What's going on? So I got nothing in the console here. Just sanity check, shall we? Okay. This will unfortunately require a page load. My sanity requires it, unfortunately. Um, okay. Well, while that's doing its thing, let's see if I can try to understand what's happening or not. So. Oh, I already had log spam in there. I should have been getting something, oh, unless I just wasn't hitting either of these. Which this should have been hit in any case. Okay. Thinking it might have been a bad cache. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Let's try that again, huh? It's kind of why I've been avoiding working on this, just because of the ultra long load time. I wonder if we can get away with doing a, a shorter list that loads a bit. More quickly. Nice. That was a lot better. All right. Hey, stuff. All right. Look, it's stuff. I am, by the way, a big advocate of what I've read referred to as puts debugging stuff spotted indeed and that stuff is what i'm talking about puts debugging is just where you you print stuff to the console it's just so you can see what's going on maybe you have a debugger you can actually use indeed we do here i don't know how to use javascript debugger actually i do know how to put prints everywhere and print out variables though and indeed for openmw lua development the same pattern for python for really any for go has a real debugger i use printing strings and objects and stuff uh you know before i jump to the debugger because it tends to be a little easier um anyways that's what we're doing right here puts debugging so let's go here to the mod list we're looking at one day the shortest big list we got Look at that. Why didn't it work before? Huh? Oh, you know what? I bet I opened the web page before I restored the stash. Good old browser cache was doing its thing. Okay, wowee. Um, so check it. 
remove from config. We want this box to be unchecked when the page loads. Todd willing. <coughs> All right. And, and, hmm. So I'm wondering if what's happening here is it's this is checked, so all of them become checked. And do we want to support having this situation? Oops. This makes it a little trickier. I'm going to go ahead and say unchecking anything should uncheck the big one automatically. Right? Um, because having the big one checked will check all the rest on the page load. That's what's happening. Yeah, I think so, Sophia. Thank you for this uh, for the buddy check on that. Um, right? So let's see here. Let's go back to the JavaScript. We still have to, by the way, doing this will not remove it from the config. We still have to handle that, but we're going to first handle this. All right, so let's get creative here. We have to somehow know what the parent button is. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Um, I don't want it to be surprising. You know, it shouldn't be surprising. I, and I feel like, yeah, if you're going through and you're doing the whole sub list, you know, boom, that does it. And then taking this away, we'll take that away too. Um, because you are no longer selecting all. So somehow we have to know, though, when I check this, I need to know about this one. And we don't currently, I don't think, know about that. Let's see what we got here. It's not impossible to do, certainly. Yeah, so we can just... Um, I know what we'll do. And it's not too cursed, I don't think. And I swear it's not, just because I have to say that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Oh, huh, okay. So, as it turns out, we do now. Check it. It is on the checkbox. Yeah, okay, yeah. Ooh. All right. So the class the list of classes has two classes. Doing something mildly cursed would be to get the list of classes and pick out the second one explicitly, right? And we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Let's go back to the JavaScript. doing something weird here. Okay. Okay, actually, this is where we're removing it. This is where we need to do it. Right here.
be the ID of the big one, right? Let's see. I need to sanity check myself here. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. That's what we need. Where the hell was I? <laughs> right here. Okay. We are going to document. Get. Come on, language. So you can do it. Okay. Check it. Just a quick sanity check. Parent big checkbox. <clears throat> Make sure we got the right thing here. And actually, I'm going to go back on some of my spam here. Let's see. Hello. All right. We should get a little noise here representing each of the boxes, big ones. When we when we uncheck it. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. So now we should be able to do this. Hey, dude guy, welcome. Thank you for joining. Glad you're here. Yeah, what are we doing currently? So, <clears throat> we're picking up uh, where I left off a few weeks ago with uh, making these checkboxes work right. And so the cool thing we'll be able to do here then is if you're going through a big mod list that's got sections, you can, instead of having to check like 20 checkboxes like I was doing the past few weeks, you can just tick the big one. Um, and specifically right now I'm working on Boom, that right there. So if I am, you know, going through and uh, and maybe customizing it, I can untick expansion delay. I don't want that. I like the broken textures. <laughs> um, and then if I ref uh, refresh the page, uh, I will get the same result now. Todd willing. <laughs> okay. Uh... What did I get? Oh, hmm, well, okay. I'm losing track of where we're at here. Yeah, I think, thanks. I think it's cool too, and uh, hopefully we'll get it. Uh, this is, I feel like, one of the last really big website features that's not like content, right? Because um, uh, I didn't mention this before, but hey, since you're here and since you, since you brought up what we're doing, um, I really want to launch 6.0 by the end of the year. And I mean, you know, team that's here with me, please disagree if you do. But I feel like we're close. We could totally, you know, launch 6.0 before the end of the year. Everybody get some Christmas, New Year time playing Total Overhaul. <coughs> or expanded vanilla, vanilla, as you please. All right. They're enabled. It's enabled there. Um, unchecking it does not yet uncheck it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, oh, Sophia, what do you mean? Um, like we're close, but also so far away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I if that's what you meant, I think I could agree with you, you know. Um, we're building like a internally as a team, we're building a list of stuff that we're considering maybe to add eventually. And it's like never ending, right? Like we feel like 6.0 is so awesome and all encompassing, but then there's just so much stuff to could always add more. Okay. So what's going to be, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, and so I don't want to rush it. Really good point, Sophia. And I definitely don't want to rush it. Um... Hey, Detail Devil, welcome! Thanks for joining. Glad you're here. Thanks for hopping on with us. Um, yeah, we're just kind of talking about when to launch 6.0 right now, and I do agree with Sophia. We don't want to jump the gun. 
but we're close. Ooh, so close. I think this is okay. Um, so what we want to do now, we're going to take this in small chunks. It's a lot of JavaScript to look at all at once. We're going to take it in small chunks. Um, Detail Devil, we're just fixing up some of the CFG generator stuff right now, so you're just in time. <laughs> uh, I know, by the way, Detail Devil, our friend here, has been working on an update uh, to Melodies and Moonlight, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put the video on here in honor of our friend here, video that was shared in our Discord channel. Yeah, well, this is it, right? This is the video uh, that no. got shared. Let's go ahead and full screen it. We'll watch it a little bit of it together. Yeah, we'll watch a little bit of it together here. It's a 45-minute video, so I don't want to, you know, video with you while I stream. But, hey, let's check it out. Um, a little bit of this gameplay looking fantastic, too. Um, let's pause the music on. Hmm, hold on Holes are bad. Perseus, Mercius, but I'm seeing. Okay. Why is this backwards? Hello. Pleasure right. is mine, painters of shadows. I'll fast forward a little bit, sure. Any more commissions? I may be interested in a portrait myself. How are you able. Uh, is art Look at those paintings. When its beauty dwells in solitary. Oop. Chain. Convince him of truth to let reason reign. I'm gonna go ahead and. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Alright, I think we're getting a little into spoiler territory there. Alright. I don't want to get into too many spoilers, actually. Suffice to say, though, I'm gonna put this video in the chat there and you all can check it out if you want and I'll put it uh, try to remember to put it also in the video notes but yeah big excite for that um, and of course Sagerith Mora BCOM Plus gonna be finding its way in uh, <clears throat> 6.0 yeah definitely awesome stuff Detail Devil thank you so much as always for keeping the good stuff coming for all of us um, yeah Let's get my Moog dubstep back on. <laughs> All right. So let's go now and make this work. And what do I mean? When I uncheck it, right, it should tell me here, boom, it's removed. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, uh, you know, I judged that uh, for the Modathon back in, you know, spring or summer or whatever. And I thought the quest was awesome as it was then. But you've expanded it so much since then. There's, like, so much more now. Um, you know, I thought it was a short but very clever quest with some beautiful additions so yeah definitely looking forward to checking it all right so we need to implement this rm installed okay and that's actually what we're doing here um okay there's really only Oh, no, no, no. We do it up here, too. Yeah. We do it up here, too. So, there's a pattern here. We do this uh, splice method, which is a JavaScript method on an array to gank out something from a specific known index. Oh, uh, here we're getting the index of the mod slug. And I think one is just how many after the index to pull out. Um, so yeah, we're pulling out exactly just the installed mod. Okay, so we need to add also text. Excuse me. Whew. All right. We need a slug. We got it. So first off, let's put this in here, and I'm spelling it a little bit differently just to distinguish it from the outer installed variable that'll be kicking around here, and we actually need to make sure we use this one, slug, good. Okay. 
and we pull it out. Actually, pull it out of the data. Cool. Okay, and then we do another one here. If, just like I'm doing above, if text, got to do two equal signs because JavaScript, don't ask me about it, I don't know. <laughs> scoped variable. No? It's not. So this is broken. Yeah. Yeah, this is broken. This does nothing, and this is an undefined variable. Naturally, it would silently fail. <laughs> I would really want to see something here. Um... scope it's scoped into here so let's see here no problem we can just go ahead and do this that should uncurse it and then actually we can get rid of that no 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 there we go yeah comment all right <sighs> and then we need another arg parent check big check have a parent big checkbox which I'll pass in as an argument then we'll go ahead and uncheck it so now looks like this scoped slug value here. And um pass in that um <coughs> excuse me, the big checkbox. It's only mildly hideous, I think. Uh, oh, you know what? We need to give a, a null here. We have no text that we're changing. But up here, we do. Install. Uh, slug is our scoped variable for that. Um, text. And then none of this business there, okay? Right? Yeah, I think that's right. Will it blend? That's the question right now. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Quick reload, as quick as it can be. Okay, 
That's a, that's a bump. Wait. I'm going to close the browser. Rather than wondering why my code isn't working. Close it for real. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Um, ooh, you know what? Take me there, please. Okay. Whoop. <laughs> so if I refresh the page, it's enabled. Good. Now checking it should unenable it. <gasps> okay. So, what's the problem? Let's see. I did save the file. Okay, that is an issue sometimes. So this would be the chunk of code. Oh. Aha, uh -huh, okay. I see what's going on. So, <clears throat> I realized I wasn't, hand I wasn't actually handling this case here. We need to know, when we check this big one, if, excuse me, if it's checked positive, so this is going to evaluate to a true expression, set it installed in the, in the data, right? Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and do this. Excuse me. And we want to. Group checkbox I. That should be right. Let's see. Ooh, okay. Ooh. All right. That's good, though. That's really good. 110. Right here. This is not our slug. What do we call it there? <coughs> Excuse me. I 
think this is gonna work. Maybe. Ooh, that four is a reserved word. Maybe. I don't expect that to work. I don't know. We'll see. JavaScript is weird. Makes me think I'm weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... That isn't gonna work. Back to the drawing board. So, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna... Oh. Yeah, yeah, I need to, okay. Let's go ahead and just... There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we will do get attribute data slug. Little trick for passing data from HTML to JavaScript. We can simply embed the slug in the HTML. We can call it data slug. And then you can use this get attribute method on any element available in JavaScript. We can say get attribute data slug to pull the slug out of there. Boom, we got a slug. All right. We'll give a quick reload. Okay. Now. Still exploding. <laughs> One time. Yeah, I feel like I probably have to... Maybe I still have a bug, but also maybe the browser is playing nasty tricks on me with caches. Let's get that console open again so we're ready for the explosion. <clears throat> hmm. All right. I have a bug. So now we're going to employ a bit of that puts debugging I mentioned before. Sanity check ourselves a little bit. Because I don't know. I could very well be passing in garbage here. This right here. Could be garbage. Probably is. All right. Null. Yeah, look at that. A data slug. Did I do what I think I did? Did I actually do that? Let's see. We need a deep sanity check here. <clears throat> okay, data slug. Look, there it is. Huh, come on. Excuse me, it's there, okay. Did I, so, I might be JavaScripting wrong. <clears throat> Chances are, that's the problem. Get attribute method. Get attribute. Is that not what I'm doing? That is what I'm doing, yo. Okay, let's take a step back. Maybe the thing I'm doing it on is not what I think it is. Seems to be the case, right? All right, let's reload the page. Put the log up, too. So I can be properly yelled at when it fails. <clears throat> All right. 
Hey, look at that, okay. <clears throat> the big thing, though. I typoed. Not J I, silly I. <laughs> Group target box, okay. Well, uh, that didn't look right to me, honestly, but. <laughs> Thanks, dude guy. We need like a, I don't know. <laughs> we need some way to like pipe these explosions into Discord. That is not right. J is the one. Because this is our... Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Back to the deep sanity check. Who knew checkboxes could be so fun? Ah, it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. You know what? So I indexes group checkboxes. Whoops. I can I can read today. I'm having some reading problems today. There we go. Right? No, no, that's still wrong. ID. Okay. I put the thing on the wrong thing. I mean, we could uh, get this in the JavaScript, but we're already getting this one, so might as well just put it on the thing we're already getting. Reduce the amount of code, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What the heck has happened? It's still enabled. Oh, wait. Still enabled. Okay, so <clears throat> something definitely blows up, obviously. Oh, wait. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I'm feeling so good about this, I'm deleting my debugging. It's going to just work. I know it. Okay. Let's make it actually removed. It's actually removed. No, it's it's on. What? <laughs> okay. We might have to take a step back and totally rewrite this code and like make an actual state machine pattern. Uh, Cause that's what we have here. We have a you know a crappy state machine. Okay, one oh. 
so this is still blowing up. It's not the one. Whoops. I think I got my wires crossed a little bit here. a fresh browser here because that has to be cache, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. We'll get to the bottom of this. Hey, Ferris. <coughs> Welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks for joining. Glad you're here. I hope you're doing well today. Just doing some JavaScript hacking right now, so you might want to run away screaming. <laughs> All right. 103. Still. Wait. 114. Yeah, so it's still crying about this line. It says, slug is not defined. Even though... I'm giving it the slug right here. <clears throat> oh no. Oh geez, I typoed so bad. Wow. I just realized what I did. Wow. Oh no. <laughs> Look at this. You see that word slug right there. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's embarrassing. All right, so the text then is uh, null. It's null here. There's no button text. Whoo! <laughs> oh wow, I can't believe I spent that much time on that. Okay, let's try this again. It's gonna just work. I'm telling you. Oh, look at that. No explosion. And it's disabled. And if I check it, wait. It's enabled. 
And if I uncheck it, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Let's test the right thing first off. Good. Now if I enable it from here and refresh the page, this should be rechecked. Oh yeah, look at that. <clears throat> um, okay. I removed this, but actually we want. Oh, group target boxes are checked. Check the parent too. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, well, maybe we'll get to it right now. Um, so. We'll say all checked. We'll say true, and then um, and then. Outside of this for loop, we can now say, if they're all checked, check the parent. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, no. <laughs> Silly. What was I thinking? <laughs> All right. Um, this line here alludes to what is yet to come, though. I'm not going to talk about that right now, because I don't want to. For now, <clears throat> excuse me. Let us see. I should reload the page, and the big checkbox will be checked. Todd Willing. See? I'm wondering if it's not cached. Because I'm not getting that. I should be getting null or something. Right? This code does, in fact, execute. Oh, it's not going to... Hmm. Is this inside the listener? Yeah, okay. Only This code's only going to execute when... Something's checked. Not necessarily on page load. Whoops. Let's go ahead and... Put that outside the scope there. All right. I think maybe that'll work. <clears throat> Let's see. Hey! <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> That's no good. I mean, it, it worked too much. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yay, and also, oof. We'll get there. Uh, we can, What we can do is we can not default to it uh, true. That was, that was a mistake. Hmm. No, because this should work. <laughs> yeah, Detail Devil, thank you for noticing that. Uh, <laughs> just to help distinguish, right, when you're working on the website, maybe some of my teammates will know what I'm talking about here to distinguish, right? Like, 
what version of the website am I looking at? We have actually a few of them floating around there for testing purposes. So yeah, just having a little fun. All right. Now, why is this not doing what I think it should be doing? Because if it's checked, okay. I think this is JavaScript things hitting me here. And we need to like do a deep comparison with a triple equal signs. How much you want to bet that's what it is. Uh, all right. I'm too used to Lua, which makes a bit more sense, I gotta say. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, Ferris. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's cursed. So cursed. Why, you ask, maybe, do you need three equal signs? And my answer to that is, just run away now. Turn back screaming. No, it's uh, it's complicated. JavaScript, um, things are sometimes equal or they're really equal. I'm not kidding. <laughs> And that's really all I have to say about that. That's how it be. They're equal, two equal signs. Or they're really equal, three equal signs. Um, and it has to do with like implementation details, right? Like I'm checking if something is null or is it like maybe null or I've... I forget the, the hideous details of it because it's been a few years, but suffice to say, you need three. Mo most of the time, you need three. When you think you need two, you probably need three is really how it go, so. Oh, okay, yeah, so there's some mat there's some implicit behavior there, yeah. Right, because this might just be a string, right? If I do this, null might actually be like this string null, or something like that. Yay, JavaScript. Okay, um, so I was actually crying about this. If that doesn't check itself, we're in a good place. If it does, we've been totted. Ooh, we've been totted. Okay. Ah, yeah, true. All checked. Um. So. The triple equals didn't save us here. Four equal signs, I believe, is... Uh, four equal signs will probably be... An assignment uh, next to an equality operator, right? Like, you can get a similar thing in C, if I recall correctly, where, yeah, you'll have, like, a, you can have, like, a addition and, a in, and a, like, a postfix. It, it's weird things can happen because it looks differently to your eyes, yeah. <laughs> it's not, unfortunately, not the state of true equality. It's a state of, uh, like... Cursed toddliness. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, though. All right. So, we got to figure out why we don't get here. Oh, because this is... Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to leave that there because this is more explicit. But this is not where actually it goes. Because this is only happening on check. We need to do another for loop outside of the, because this is the event listener. This code will only run when we check a checkbox, which I keep, uh, <laughs> yes, detail devil. <laughs> we are super equal here. Actually, I'm writing a new feature for JavaScript. I'm calling it the most equal, where basically you just hold the keyboard down like that and everything just works. No, no, not really. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do this. <laughs> All right. We just got to repeat our code a little bit here. Um, the J is our inner, is our, our. I'll leave J there, whatever. All right, this is, I believe, what we want. Um, so basically we are outside of the listener code, so forget this exists for now. This code doesn't exist. 
we're looking at the big check boxes we're looking at the little check boxes underneath it and we're saying if it's not checked that's what this let's just do it this way because that's less magical if it's not checked like really not checked right because we're doing three equal signs not really really though because we didn't put four boom set that there okay now let's reload the page and get the result that we want Oh, <laughs> okay. That's okay. We can simply move that outward, uh, outside of the scope of the the handler function, and hopefully that doesn't do anything cursed. I don't know. <coughs> Uh, okay, I'll uncheck it. It may have stayed checked because it was previously checked. That's it. Hey, okay, yeah, good, good, good. That's good. All right. So, what I want to see here now. Remove from CFG should persist. <sighs> okay, well, we are kind of in a weird state, though, to be fair. So let's go ahead and put it in ourselves. Okay, now I want to click this, and it goes away. Good. Now I want to click that, and it comes back. Good. So eventually, by the way, if you're curious, oh man, this looks really tedious to test. You're right, it is. Eventually, in pre-2090, hopefully, we will have automated browser tests where we will have robots on the GitLab CI servers open up a web browser and like do all this clicking automatically so I don't have to sit here and make my fingers hurt. It's just clicking all the time is, you know. Um, that'll be hopefully pre-2090. All right, um, wow. So, whoops. I'm gonna go ahead and stage what I got here, even though it's messy. His, yeah, more is what I'm saying. I want to be lazy. I don't want to do anything, really. <laughs> okay, so what needs to happen next? Uh, you may be wondering. This is all fun and good, right? We have demonstrated that checking this and checking this will update the status. Um, unfortunately, what happens, or doesn't happen, rather, is when we check these big boxes, we need it also to go one step further and update this URL. Because what happens is when we check these little boxes under the hood, it's updating what URL this button goes to so that when we click it, we get a result with only the mods that are checked. And uh, just so you can see it, it being broken, we'll go ahead and select those, but we will unselect those. Okay, but when we get our result, Patch for Purist and, and company are still going to be in there. If it's broken in the way I think it is, which it is. Ooh, nobody's in there. Wowee, okay. Well, yeah, okay. You can see. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. Not what I expected. That's for sure. It only... Oh boy, okay, all right. This is fine. <laughs> wow, okay. This is fine. So I'm gonna check this all, go to the bottom. Excuse me. All right, well, hey, all right. Um, a couple things are happening here. Um, I 
this didn't check itself. Um, and if we go down here, you know, it looks right. You can see the, the URL kind of thing when I highlight my mouse over it. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I think we're probably a long way away from that, but you could probably use ChatGPT to help you write a story. I bet ChatGPT would be pretty good about writing dialogue. Um, you would obviously have to buddy check it. Make sure no garbage got in there. Hey, okay, huh. I'm going to actually close the browser and reopen it fresh so I know exactly where I'm at. Cool, okay, right on, sweet. <laughs> That's cool. Um, it's, uh, I think, a, probably a pretty good use, you know, just like give me a story, right, and then fix it up. I really need to, like, try to get ChatGPT to write JavaScript for me. I bet it's pretty good at that. ChatGPT, read my JavaScript and make it not suck. Thank you. What even is that? So it doesn't update the button. We're at where we should be. Everything makes sense. Ah. But we need a visual to help us understand. Oof. Excuse me. All right, yeah, this, so this is what we need, CFG URL. And I, I have noted here, we need to also update the URL. Okay, so let's, down here, as is tradition, we're going to go ahead and uh, put the variable in here so we print it out and see what it is. Actually, CFG URL. Yeah, okay. Okay. So what if I define this up here? Neat. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Mm, okay. I think that's all I need for now. Who? Oh my god. <laughs> it's stop. Oh, make it stop. Okay. blown up okay ah oh, I see this is what we need to do here There we go. Yes. That's what we need. All right. Let's try that again.
So ideally, um, we can get through this JavaScript stuff today or tomorrow, and then, yeah, we'll resume uh, working on polishing the list. And we'll have a happy total overhaul new year, hopefully. Preset is not defined, friends. Ooh, oh, yeah. Huh. Silly me. Okay. We don't know the preset yet. Maybe we can get it. Push both of these up here. All right. <clears throat> All right, that's what I wanted to see. So here we go. Sand out. I'll leave it in for now. Okay. Now, what we need is when we check this, we need to change that. Because this is what gets fed down here into the button. Right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm stripping out. So this, <laughs> this little bit of black magic. Let's zoom in on this. This little bit of black magic trims out the trailing ampersand, so I don't need to delete it. Thank you, past me. And whoever wrote the Stack Overflow thing, I no doubt copied that from. All right, so. If we're setting it installed, we will append the slug to this. Right? So let's uh slug. And then we need to uh C F G URL. I hope this works. the ampersand there okay how dare I forget semicolons I'm forgetting semicolons what is wrong with me okay so now hmm, so we have the problem of uh, when we uncheck something, we need to regenerate the whole thing, basically. Right, because when we remove something, we need to get it out of there. And I think the best way to do it, not the best, but, uh, you know, a way that we are going to do it is, uh, look at that, past me, I already thought of this. We have update, submit, href. Uh, so I think we can put the logic in here. Right. So, taking a step back, I need to decide what this does. I think it should be something that runs every time something is checked and also every time the page loads. Because those are the times that potentially the URL can change, right? So it needs to run here. And I would say also right here. No matter if we are setting or removing an installed mod, we need to update the button. All right, so let's back this out. We're not doing this no more.
So yeah, this is going to just unconditionally, I need to pass it, let's see. I need to read all the checkboxes. So we're going to pass that in. And we're going to say for Did I? No, it's just language server goofing. <clears throat> That's not a typo. So, starting from zero until the number gets the length of the thing we're throwing at it, and each time increase it, so we can go through each of them. <clears throat> this is an old school for loop syntax. I think there's a newer way to do it in JavaScript. I'm not going to mess with it right now, though. Um, we want to say if. slug is on each one of these things. I need to remind myself what it looks like. Right, it's on the check. Data slug. not find name from group checks. It's in the function argument. Come on, you're kidding me. Language server, killing me. All right. Now we can actually do what we want to do here. Our friend get attribute. data slug uh, oh and uh, <clears throat> yes and the ampersand of course all right let's see how right I was update submit a trip so we need the URL string CFG URL. Group checks. Okay. Except this is not going to be. as well just give it a try hmm. so I'm gonna expect to see a lot of noise here when I check this
Oh wait, I didn't. No, I didn't actually make it print anything. Hey, wait. And and actually, I do want it to do that though. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, just me, <laughs> not realizing I forgot something. Yeah, yes, dude, guy, yes. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, and another thing. I'm not quite sure if this is right. Okay, actually it's not. I'm telling you right now, it's not right. So we need to write here. We gotta come back to this. Ooh, right here too. Ugh. Okay, I'm actually gonna uncomment. Backtrack just a little bit here. And here. That's closer. Well, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> Yikes. Oh, wait a minute. But the last thing I got. Oh, wait. I think it did work. Okay, okay. <clears throat> hey, that's pretty good. Hmm, that should be checked. Hmm. Little note for myself later. Uh, wow. Uh, I mean, you know. Let's get our... Okay, so I didn't... Hmm. Right. I did update it. Okay. Let's check. Yeah, okay. That's not working. Hmm. I really want to see right now when I uncheck it, we need to be seeing this. Not these. We need to be seeing this. It's not happening. Boy, what a complicated feature. Yeah, look, see, it's not clearing itself out. This would be when it's getting called. I think we need to... I got a feeling about this. Just tr Let's try it. It's a will it blend moment.
Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, okay, so that is a clue here. No, huh? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We, I think, do think we really need to... going about this all wrong, you see. Yeah. Way wrong. Wow, that is a mistake, too. That might be why it wasn't working before, actually. <clears throat> I digress. It was still wrong. We need to set this right here. So let's gank that out. Just pass at the boxes. Okay. And let's actually not print that, okay? <clears throat> We're inching towards. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sophia. I appreciate the heads up about that. Let's see here. <clears throat> ah, yeah. Thank you, Maxim Aramenko, aka Maxiari. Uh, this is what you meant, Sophia? We need this. Hopefully, we will have this merged actually into the engine soon. Um,. But yeah, props to Maxiari. <clears throat> totally love this work. It probably inspired G7 to do uh, his uh, project for MWSE, which you can see in action here. Pretty outstanding. Really like this. Look at that. Oh, we need this. Um, chances are we will see this. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> chances are we will see this in 0 0.49. Uh, things move a bit more slowly in OpenMW land than they do in MWSC land. So here we are. Thank you, Sophia. I'm glad we got a chance to look at that. Y yeah, actually, uh, thank you, Smalio. Um, that's a great question. So check it out. One of the gifts that, uh, yes, it does. So check this out. You can see, right? Instead of just the, uh, uh, we're not like, more smoothly moving around. So yeah, it affects all animations, as far as I know, are blended. Um, yeah, cool, super cool beans. All right, so before we wrap up though, let's finish where we were at here. Uh, excuse me. I was gonna reload the page, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I was gonna do, excuse me. Whew. Where am I trying to use this? Oh, right. I'll comment that out for now. Let's try that again. Okay. So, my first guess is this is not what I think it is. <laughs> Don't try that at home. I must have hit the macro. And e so, in Emacs, you can tell it hit a certain key, you know, 
20 times or n, n number of times, however you want it to do. And uh, that's what I just did there. If you saw like all the semicolons get in there, I must have hit the macro to like splat in six semicolons without realizing it. All right, let's go to foo. Let's go to console log foo. Nothing. Uh oh, that's no good. So this is not not what I think it is. Well, we're gonna have to leave the stream right here with the mystery of foot. But I thank you as always for joining. Happy modding and join us on the next stream when we're gonna continue this crazy adventure. Have a great day. Cheers. Yeah, right, dude guy. We'll talk about that once it gets merged. Cheers.